Uh, right, it's all working. Hi everyone, Lee Ashby here, Motocross and Speedway Memories. Uh, just before I start, I'd like to say a uh, big thanks for the support to Simon Pardew of White Eagle Finance. They give quality financial advice for pensions, investments, mortgages and protection. Check the website at www.whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. Right, a big thank you to this man for doing a part two with me after we had a few technical issues with the back end of the, the last interview. But uh, absolute legend he is, no no less than seven-time British champion and British speedway legend, Mr. Scotty Nichols. How's it going, Scott? Good, mate. I think you're telling a porky there. It was just because <laughs> you said the answers were rubbish and I had to do it again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm not that forward planning. <laughs> Uh, but I really appreciate it, mate. I really appreciate doing that again. I'm a bit of a nightmare, but uh, at least you agreed to do it. So I really appreciate that. Top man. No worries. So what we'll do before we, uh, like I discussed with you, before we uh, just catch up where we were, I think it was up to question 22 or whatever it was, uh, just going to discuss basically, obviously, the first two rounds of the GP. We've all seen you on the TV with that beautiful shirt, Speedway shirt on you had from Claudio. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, very cool. I'm sure there'll be a few clamberers for that one. I think so. I think um, Mike Patrick was pretty chuffed as well because I think a lot of the photos were his. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's cool, isn't it? You know, it's, I think Speedway's not a massive mainstream. So to have a, a shirt that's out to the general public with kind of some Speedway icons on there, I think is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it's well received. What's the feedback been like then? Been really good. They've been really pleased. It's, uh, you know, what they love about it is they're really, really genuinely just such a down to it's a family business they're really cool guys um and girls um but they love speedway they love they don't know anything about it but until now um or until i got involved but they just love their interaction they love the passion that the, the speedway fans have not just for speedway but the way they interact and have the banter and, and that's what they're all about you can see their shirts you know they're cool shirts but they're a little bit different they don't take themselves too seriously um very obviously passionate about what they do with their clothing but um no, they, they love the interaction, so long may it continue. Fair play. Is that a Claudio one you got on there now, or is that your own yeah, one? Yeah, the motorcycles on there. Yeah. I've, I thought I'd better do it. I've lessened the tone with flamingos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love a flamingo. Oh, they prefer a bike, though. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. I'll have to sort that out. Anyway, right, uh, about the GP then. So you obviously had the first two rounds. Um, I see you had must have had good feedback from the BT guys and the... And the GPs were really good, weren't it? What, you, what was your thoughts on it all? It was. I thought it was fantastic. You know, I think it was obviously great to get some racing back, obviously top level. Um, yeah, feedback was fantastic. Obviously, you know, not, not just kind of on social medias, but the viewing figures were really good. So BT were pleased with that. Yeah. Um, and the racing was great. You know, I think uh, I love genuinely love the idea of it being a little bit different this year with the back-to-back -back two-day thing. I think it throws up a lot of... Um, kind of throws a few more spanners in the works. I mean, the, the pressure those guys are going to be under to do that back-to-back -back like that um, for the remainder of the season. And obviously the pressures of their domestic racing on top of it as well. I think that uh, throws another kind of cog in there. So, um, no, I love it. You know, I think it's great. And I think what's probably most exciting about it is that it's wide open. There's a good, mm. probably eight riders that I'd say are capable of winning it. I know it's very early days, but I think it was, you know, it was great to see a couple of, um, I wouldn't say surprises, but I don't mm. necessarily think that people would have pinned kind of Laguta and Magic to be right at the top of the board. So, yeah, I think Laguta, he normally shows that flashes of speed, doesn't he, all the time, but not as consistently as that, maybe. No, exactly. And I think that's the thing, you know, I've said about that with Yanofsky. I think he struggles mm. to maintain that form. I think it's more the mental aspect, not the riding. Um, for a long series, whereas it being a lot more condensed. Uh, also, they've had a lot more riding under their belt, so I think a few riders have had a chance to build up even more confidence coming into it, and some riders, I think, have struggled. I mean, um, you know, I love Doyley, but I mean, I can't imagine how frustrating he must be feeling right yeah. now. Um, obviously, it's, you know, we know what he's capable of, and we know how passionate and determined he is um, about his racing, so it was, it was tough to see him kind of struggling the way he was but you know he'll have dug deep and hopefully we turn things around this weekend in Borja. 
when that sort of happens to you guys when you sort of goes like obviously especially having a couple like didn't go well for him will, will they literally go away will he be chasing engines now with tuners and 100 percent. there's no <laughs> question well, because you don't have a long time to turn uh, around so it's mm. kind of six weeks and it's over um yeah, yeah. and also there's not loads of domestic racing in between to test it um yeah. i know England's different but england's quite good especially for someone like Doyle to get his confidence back up. And then he can go to Poland and Sweden, test a few things and start winning some races against the big names. Um, he's not going to have that now. He's literally got Poland and that's that's really tough. Um, there's a big pressure on them to perform there. So uh, he'll be testing, there's no question. I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be some different engines roll out in Gorgia. From a Brit's point of view, it's good to see Wuffy on form. Definitely. Um, I think we knew it was redemption for him, wasn't it? I know he had the back end yeah. last year, um, yeah. which is a, you know, um, I'm not saying excuse is the right word, but a justification yeah. as to, to why he had a bit of a tough season. And yeah. I think when he had that, I think mentally he'd switched off a little bit as well. Yeah. Um, I think he's out to, to prove to a lot of people that he's capable of being world champion again, and he's right in the mix. Yeah, it looks very interesting. So we'll see how that goes in the next one then. Definitely. Cool. Thanks for that. Uh, right then, we'll get back on with the questions. Uh, next one I had for you was, what do you personally feel are your best achievements in Speedway to date and why? Um, getting a shirt deal, I think. That, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll don't ruin that next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, um, uh, I don't know, there's lots of different things. Obviously, being British champion seven times is something I'm immensely proud of. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something that no one else has done. Uh, obviously, I'd have loved to have done better on the world stage, but uh, no, I think you know the seven British titles is up there, and, and also with the the league racing, you know, I've, there's so many different aspects. The league race, I've been part of and captained a few very successful league teams, which is something yeah. I'm very proud of. And also, as much as we didn't uh, win a gold, but I've been part of some really Good successful place. Team GB and captains. Team GB, so um, thing, lots yeah. of different things to be proud of. For sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, next one I've got for you. You have won a lot individually as a rider, but a lot as a team rider as well. Do you enjoy both aspects of that, or is there one you prefer more than the other? Or Good question. Um, mm. Definitely enjoy both aspects. I mean, I think when, when you win something individual, it's just you. You're on your own. It's just no one else out there. You're fighting for yourself. Um and, and when you go over that finish line, when you've just won whatever it is, you know, any title or any meeting when you win it, um, there's a huge sense of self-satisfaction and, and that's hard to compare. But equally for me, I, I genuinely love being part of a team. I mean, I get in some ways just as big a buzz or sometimes a bigger buzz by team riding. And, you know, if I've had a real tough pressure race where I've kind of helped my teammate, I've kind of blocked the other rider behind and we've kind of had a, a four lap battle with you know someone trying to push through to get the win and, and we've yeah. gone over the line and got five one and if that secured the meeting that's that's um something that i love being part of as well so they're pretty much for me they're on par with each other both got, both, both got their good aspects uh next one i got uh which riders would you say that you didn't enjoy racing with is there any particular riders that you normally seem to have run-ins with all the time or how long have we got <laughs> as long as you want scott as long as you want no there's to be fair you know what over the years is i haven't had um I've, I've had clashes with a few riders over the years i think um i've gone totally fine with them now but kind of me and Hans seem to Hans Hansen seem to clash a lot. Me and Nicky yeah. Pedersen seem to clash a lot over the years. Um, but you know, there's no one right now that I, I dislike riding against. I don't like riding against dirty riders. Full stop. It doesn't matter who they are. I think um, I love racing hard with somebody bar to bar and, and pushing and shoving. That's that's fun. You know, I enjoy that when it's there's a limit and we all know. I've stepped over it. You know, of course. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not on purpose, but we all step over the mark sometimes. But I think. You know, there's some riders out there that do it all the time, and and for me, it's a dangerous enough dangerous enough sport as it is. So, dangerous riders I don't enjoy riding against. Obviously, there was your little famous run in at the Cardiff GP with Emil. <laughs> We're best buds now. I, I I think you I think you would have been better off if you went have uh, slid on the steel shoe, but I see you got the good right in and after that eventually. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> Didn't have the foresight to take the steel shot. And fair play to him, he got in there quick. And then yeah, he did. Yeah. 
I've got a right in, but what what is the point? I hit the crash helmet. I mean, seriously, it's oh, like no, it's just what am I going to damage? But it's that's yeah. adrenaline for you. That's what it does. So um, no, I think we were polar ends of the spectrum. He was having a massive high end and just yeah. having a tough time in Cardiff, and I was just having a shocker of a year, full stop. And I think it was just uh. Because I remember the race, I like watched the race. There wasn't really, there was nothing in it really. It was like you might have yeah. just pin, pinched him a couple of times, but it was like literally bought nothing. Yeah, and exactly. So he was just frustrated, wasn't he? Exactly, he was frustrated because he get by. Uh... Impressed. And, you know, mm. he was he was flying. You know, he won Prague and he's opened it in his debut GP, and you know he was on a crest of a wave, and I think it was a little bit of a a wake up call for him. I think you know the wheels fell off a little bit in Cardiff for him, and and man, the wheels hadn't ever got attached for me all year, so. It was um, just emotions got the better of us, and uh, but hey, it was all done, and it's um. Well, yeah. I also remember sneak, sneaky Ashley Holloway having a little shove as well at the pits as he went up there, little rat, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> Swindon yeah, he lad, he was a Swindon. He wasn't lad. quite so brave later though. No, I'm sure he wasn't. <laughs> when he did it, I thought, oh, not too sure about that, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, but hey ho, again, he the moment, isn't it? It's yeah, all, yeah, yeah. We've all kissed the maid up. We're yeah, that's good. good. That's what, that's what matters, isn't it? Cool. Uh, next one. Who would you say were the three best riders that you feel that you've ever competed with uh, in your careers to date? Ooh, that's tough. That is a yeah, tough one. Ten and would have been tough. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch banging around in my head right now. Um, if we say British League, we'll, we'll leave it at that for a minute. Yeah, well, I, you know what? I, yeah, but I mean, you know, I've, been, still I've really been around a while, so I've kind of ridden against them all. Um, uh, yeah. For me, the three that spring to mind when that question is asked, and it's not taking anything away from any other any other rider, but I think no question Tony Rickardson. Um, yeah. He's the goat of Speedway for me. Nice. Uh, um, Jason Crump and Nicky Pedersen. And, and to be honest, I think all for the same reasons, that they're kind of quite different riders. They're all very yeah. hard riders. Yeah, very hard, yeah. But I think it's just all three of them had – spells in their career where they were just unbelievably dominant mm. um and, and and you knew when a gp was coming up as well because they they seemed to like flick another switch mm. and go into another gear um mm. so yeah i think those three for me i think just, like i said just because they were i mean ultra professional tony in particular but just their dominance um and the kind of the aura they had about them when they turned up somewhere it was, um, yeah, I mean, I've, loved, I've admiration for every rider, but those three, I'd say, for me. First of all, your thoughts on Nicky Pedersen that was due to be back with Sheffield this year in the in the English League? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's another shame this year, isn't it? He would have, he was, he's value for money, he's box office. He was going to put bums on seats. I mean, yep, sure, yeah. you know, he's uh, he's no spring chicken, but he certainly <laughs> hasn't trained it in. As he's, um, no. You know, he's value for money and... You know what you get with Nicky. I mean, he'll put everything on the line. He's not afraid to bang bars still. Um, Nicky's Nicky, you know. You kind of know what you get with him. Um, he's maybe not quite as bad as he used to be, but he does step over the line sometimes. Um, but that's the way it is. But you know what? He's one of those riders that he'll give it out, but he has to accept that he's going to come back his way sometimes as well, and he doesn't always receive it so good. But I have a lot of respect for him as a, as a rider. You know, yeah. He's, achieved a lot and he's he's got it he's not the most naturally gifted rider he's got it through just sheer hard work and and grit and determination hopefully he's uh back for next season when this all comes together yeah hopefully so i mean it, it, you know what i'm hearing at the moment he's he's supposed to be um so uh if that's the case then i think it'd be great for british Lebo. the other one bit more of a shock mr jason crump it was a shock. Mm. A huge shock. And again, he's rumoured to be coming back. So Yeah, he uh, said to be in the interview that he was. So Yeah, again, it's fantastic for British mm. media. I think it's certainly the shot in the arm we need. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's obviously this year is devastating what's happened, but mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, we can use this year to um, be better prepared for next season and, and, and do everything we can to to maximise those things. I mean, that's, you know, two massive names there, but then obviously you've got Pete Kildman coming back as well. So, yeah, you know, there's some big names back in British Speedway and it can only be good for the sport. Yeah, for sure. Okay, next one. If you could give good advice to any youngster out there that wants to be a pro Speedway rider, what would it be? Take up football. 
yeah. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, um, enjoy it. Hundred percent, you have to enjoy it. It's a, it's a, the best sport in the world when things are going good, and but you have to enjoy it. You know, um, that's why we all started in the first place. But I think you have to be very dedicated and, and professional about it. Um, always be polite. I think um, Greg Hancock is a good role model on role model for things like that. Always show respect for people, because sure as hell the people that were there for you on the way up, you're gonna need them on your way back down. So always treat people with respect. And um, but you have to be firm, and and you have to sometimes be a little bit ruthless. Um, I was probably probably still am a little bit too too loyal and 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 give people too much time. I think you know your career can be quite short at times, and and that window of opportunity. So I think. If something's there, there's a way you can make those changes and do it respectfully. But I think when opportunities there, you have to take them. You know, don't second guess it. Spot on. Uh, what other sports do you enjoy doing or watching yourself? Uh, I love stuff with wheels. Um, love motocross. Um, kind of, I love watching motocross, supercross, all that type of stuff. Um, I'd like to get on my motocross bike. I haven't been out nowhere near as much as I'd like to, but hopefully I can get a little bit more. Um, go out mountain biking quite a bit. I enjoy that. But I, I love all sports. I like playing football, basketball, tennis. I'll pretty much, you know, most sports I'll, I'll play and have a go at. So, yeah. so I suppose the mountain biking, etc., keep helps for the fitness as well. As... It does, yeah, and I enjoy it. I mean, living in Brighton, I've got the Downs, so it's, um, it's, it's brilliant, you know. You've got... You never go flat for too far, which, <laughs> oh my God, another bloody hill. But yeah, yeah. Just for the fitness and, and but the views are amazing. I mean, I'd never get bored of the views. It's um, it's a beautiful part of the country to live and and I enjoy it. There's a there's a good bunch of us go out. It kind of varies on the size, but we always have a bit of a giggle and mm. and stuff like that. But you know, and we we push it as well, so it's all good fun. Uh, I saw a couple of posts of you your friends going out, and I saw an interesting one of uh, maybe someone was relieving themselves. <laughs> These happen quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's quite funny. Goes, oh, yeah, what's the view? What's the view like over there? I think you were saying yeah, on the video. Just, just admiring the view. I was like, yeah, your view's better than mine, Kev. But, uh, <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And old KT Kelvin Tate, he comes along as well. He's. Oh, uh, does he? Yeah, he's in. He's in good shape for an old boy. He gets Ooh. along, but uh, yeah, and trust me, he's still just as amplified and just as vocal on a push bike as he is in commentary. So <laughs> it doesn't stop. Don't, don't him. stop him. <laughs> no, and then that's... he has a caffeine fix, and it just gets ten times worse. Yeah. All right. Oh, cool. Uh, next one then. What things would you change in British Speedway if you could go in forward? Keep it simple. Um, mm. Set some sensible rules. Keep them in place for at least three years so teams can build. But the the, the biggest thing I would do, which was something that I don't know if it'll ever happen, but is have it run independently. Yeah. Um, let the promoters do their job of promoting the sport and run their clubs as best they can. But to have it promoted and, and run and organised by an independent body so that, um, you know, there's there's no vested interest then. I think that, yeah. for me, that's the best thing that could happen for the sport and especially with the, the huge opportunities we have with social media and with the TV deals on the table. Yeah. For me, that's the best thing that could happen to move our sport forward. Yeah, I agree with that. Spot on. Um, you had a lot of years in the GP series, obviously, good years in the GP. What were your thoughts and memories of your time in the GP? First, it was a, a huge honour to be in there. Um, massive sense of achievement. I think, you know, it's one of those things where it, it, it's kind of mixed with emotions for me. I, I, I don't feel like I achieved what I had the ability to do. I think I should have, yeah. should have and could have achieved more. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it, it's, it's not until you... Uh, you speak to somebody in the general public who just out of curiosity, oh, what do you do for a job or work or whatever? And you start talking to them and they, you, you go into a little bit more detail and it's yeah. you go, actually, do you know what? That's, that's pretty cool. Like, okay. I didn't, I didn't do as good as I wanted, but that's still a, a pretty big achievement. So for me, it's something I'm very proud of. Um, it's a real pressure cooker situation though. I mean, the intensity when you're there and, and the nerves and, and the, the pressure, Mm-hmm. Um, it's huge. Cardiff is something that was always a GP I always looked forward to, but it was one that was just full of other pressures and emotions as well. You couldn't go anywhere without being kind of mobbed for an autograph and things like that, which is which is something it is amazing and it's mm-hmm. it's, it's really, really nice to be in that position. It's, it's obviously nice to be wanted, but at the same time it's for long, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you're like, Man, I'm I'm actually here to try and do a job and 
Mm. But you know what? You can't because those <laughs> people pay your wage. So um, I have a lot of good memories. I've got to travel around a lot, some fun experiences, some not so fun experiences. But all in all, I look back on it with, with fond memories. Had some close ones when in uh, the Australian one, wasn't it? it was... Yeah, that was, you know, that was one that will kind of that and touching the tapes in the final in Cardiff. Yeah, I was getting, I was getting one. Yeah, I it'll probably always haunt me. I think um, mm. both of those. I mean, Australia was just, you just don't know what that win could have done. Would it would have set me up for more wins because we've seen other rides in the park. I mean, Lee Adams, for example. Didn't win a Grand Prix for ages, and then he won that first one, and then it was like something. Open the gates, yeah. You know, um, and Cardiff, I genuinely felt that night I was on it. I felt mm-hmm. like I was riding good. I felt genuinely felt I could have won it. And, and trust me, when you're in the Grand Prix like that, um, it's for me at the level I was at, it's not very often that that genuine feeling comes in where you feel like, do you know what, I can actually do this tonight and win. You can tell yourself all day long and you can tell the media and all your friends and sponsors, but <laughs> when you've got that, so there's a difference between saying it and feeling it. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. that night I felt it and then it, it didn't happen. So. Uh, I remember that very well. It was getting. Yeah, it was, but uh, hey-ho, it's another one that uh, goes in the book, doesn't it? I'm sure most riders would like one British title, let alone seven. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, I have to remind myself of some of the things I have achieved. And, yeah, uh, awesome. no, I'm, There's no regrets. You know, one thing I know I've always I've always put 100% into every race, every lap, and, and I can't ask no more than that. Yeah, for sure. Um, you do a lot of work now, obviously, with the TV and uh, with BT for the GP series. How did you actually originally get into that? And do you enjoy that side of things now and why? Um. I kind of got into it by chance, really. Uh, I was on as a guest a couple of times when Sky had it, uh, when Keith Hewn used to front it um, when I was injured, when I was still in the Grand Prix. And and uh, then actually it was in when Eurosport took over um, through a friend I'd put Sophie's name forward uh, to do it. And then they saw it and then the, the producer had seen some footage of me and, and – said would I be interested in doing it as well I was like yeah of course I would you know so um and it kind of snowballed from there really uh and then obviously Eurosport finished and BT took it over and BT wanted to carry me on and now I do it with Natalie but so it wasn't something I necessarily set a a stall out to do um but the opportunity now took it and I genuinely really really enjoy it and I'd love to do more it's uh it's fun it's it's different um it's, it's it's lovely meeting all the different people and seeing all the behind the scenes stuff. It's you know what what happens in the studio and behind the scenes is a lot different to what you kind of see on the camera. Um, but also for me, I have to I, I watch the racing and I, I see it from a different perspective. So instead of just sitting here watching as a fan, which is easy to do, trust me, at the weekend I sat there, oh god, this is a good race. But um, yeah. we're kind of looking out for different things, and that, that's quite interesting for me to try and put across some of the the kind of rider perspectives to hopefully give the, the viewer a little bit more of an insight to what's going on. Is it quite difficult sometimes? Obviously you're racing with these guys regularly and then obviously you say things and being honest and stuff like that. Does that ever, is that ever quite difficult sometimes to say how it is? Yeah, it, it's difficult, but mm. I'm there to kind of be honest and, and impartial. It's uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I mean, we've spoken about Doyle. I mean, uh, Doyle's rider, I, I genuinely really like and have a lot of time yeah. for. Um, yeah. It's hard to see him struggle, mm. but I can't sit there and, and not say he's struggling, you know. Yeah, he was yeah. fine, but it's not an insult. It's a fact, and you have to kind of sometimes, I have to say it how I see it, and yeah. I'll always be honest, and um, I think people who know me know that I'd never say something uh, out of disrespect. It's just being honest, and at the end of the day, they... Deep down, everyone knows um, if they've performed bad or if they've if they've done if they've done a dirty move. If I say it's a dirty move, they know it. So it's not like I'm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So um. Yeah. But it, no, it can be tough sometimes, but mm. I have to say it how it is, and and I think hopefully people appreciate and, and respect the fact that that's what I do. Do you uh, get quite a bit of feedback on uh, how that goes? So I see a lot of people enjoy you and Natalie doing it. Really, I personally enjoy it as well, and. Yeah, no, we do get a lot of feedback. I think, you know, Natalie's fantastic at her job. She genuinely is. I think, um, you know, she needs a lot of credit. She she has a 
her role is way way harder than mine and, and she does it fantastically well and she prepares herself she does a lot of work for it and, mm-hmm. and she deserves that role I think it's something she obviously wanted to do as a kid she's a huge Speedway fan um, so yeah no it is I think but again you know some people will, will have their opinion <laughs> so, <laughs> on Twitter said um, about oh. the Freddie thing with Zmarzlik that I got it wrong and and uh, Smarjly locked up in front of him, and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, uh, I, I think I might say something about. I don't know what you've been drinking or were you watching." The- <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, you, know, <laughs> it, you know, that's the way I look at it. It's uh, can't take it too serious. I'll always try and have a bit of banter with people. So, oh, the yeah, you know, people love to tell the experts what's what. <laughs> There's a lot of off-track world champions. Isn't oh there? yeah, Jesus. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, I think you do a cracking job, anyway, mate. Personally, I think hey. uh, yeah, it's really good. Looking forward to the next one as well. Uh, next one, next one. Uh, you have raced for a lot of British League clubs. Uh, riding for which club and what period in time did you most enjoy to date and why? Oh, good question. Mm. Um, there's been lots. Uh, mm. Obviously, I've been part of some very successful teams. Obviously, yep. Ipswich 9 8 probably the oh, most amazing. dominant yeah. successful team we've got in history What's in it? British Speedway, should I say. Um my time at Coventry was fantastic, but I think for me it was Paul, um, 99, 2000 when I went down there. It was, I think because for me it was it was like the next step in my career, but probably one of the biggest steps for me kind of maturing as a rider as well. And that's sort of why I moved down to Paul, uh, not personally down to the club. Yeah. Because um, I felt I was at that stage, I needed to get away from my hometown. As much as I love riding for Ipswich, yeah, I needed to get away. I need to spread my wings. I need to stand on my own two feet um, and get away from the uh, the hometown feel. And, and and it was the best move I could have done. There, there was some fantastic people down at Paul. It was a year that Matt Ford and Mike Golding had just taken it over. Um, did a fantastic job promoting the club. Um, that was when I really got to know Midlow um, and have a good relationship with him. I think he was a fantastic team manager. And, and all those things, you know, and, and have you was in the team and Mark Lorem and it was, it was a good team. Um, but it was just for me, it was it was like another big step in my career. And it was probably one of the probably one of the biggest steps I made from from one season to the next. Did you enjoy the track? I did. Yeah, um, it, it was it was good then. I mean, it, I'm just thinking right now because it's changed a bit over time. But mm. it was it was reasonably sleek but there was like that first and second I mean Javi had the, a line dialed in there on that first and second bend yeah. he was proper grass tracking front wheel right over the yeah. line yeah it was uh, it was good it was a fun track I, I did enjoy it and the crowd was brilliant and the sponsors and the support down there so it was uh, yeah and it was a, a, a massive change from the season before I actually asked Javi about that in his interview and he said that he loved that time down there as well at that period yeah, it was was brilliant, you know. I think it was there's a real fresh energy. Um, yeah. Matt Ford, you know, he's he's a great promoter. He, yeah. he, don't get me wrong, they have some they have good support down there. They have good sponsors, but yeah. you know those sponsors need to be entertained and they need to be drawn into it. And yeah. and they did a good job, you know. Yeah. I think it was it was a fun fun time to be down there, and I, I definitely enjoyed being. I that was the first time I'd really got to know Habby as well um, I thought he was a great he was captain at the time and I thought he was a, a good captain and I kind of learned I learned a few things from him as well as, a, as for being a captain too I was just about to say did you take things from other riders uh, before you would become a captain yourself or did you was that interesting definitely and I think mm. Habby was one of them I think and that was the thing for me as well I think the combination between Habby and Midlow um, mm. both very passionate um, mm. in different ways mm. um, but and I kind of kind of plucked little bits from both of them to be yeah. fair not not saying that I was some fantastic captain but I think it was yeah, yeah. you know I, I saw things in them that I liked and and kind of adopted it maybe put my own spin on some of them yeah. um, but no it was it was a good time and they had some good leadership down there did you enjoy yourself as a captain did you enjoy that role through the teams that you did that I did um something mm. I still enjoy um you know I've always said I enjoy the role but I've always said as well oh Sorry, I've always said as well that um, we got a call coming. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when a team is going good, mm. then there's kind of seven captains, if that makes sense. Everyone plays yeah, a captain. Yeah, with it. Yeah. You know, but there's times where you, 
a team sometimes needs somebody to to stand up and say things and 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 I have done that but trust me there's times where I kind of need other people to do the job because I'm having a tough time but uh, mm. I, I do enjoy being captain I was going to say what was that like I, I suppose it must be sometimes hard if you're struggling for form or whatever and then you're captain that must be quite definitely and that's mm. where that's where I think if you as a captain can uh, you know can help to try and generate a good team atmosphere and a good camaraderie within the team um, and combine that with the team manager. I think it's where the team manager and the captain, if they can work together, I think that's when that can help so that if the captain of the team is having a bit of a sucky night, that mm. the others can kind of pull together and, and do that. Because, not and it's, it's, again, it's a lot of people think their captain has, has got to be the best rider in a team, but it's not, not the case at all. A captain yeah. is somebody that can can inspire people and, and can lead people um, doesn't always mean leading on the track it yeah. can be getting people in a good frame of mind to do the best they can on the track yeah. experience and all that uh, right next one I've got you signed for Peterborough and Kent Kings for the new season it's just been cancelled obviously what uh, did you think about their new teams and obviously frustrating as it was and everything it was um, both teams I thought were great um, mm. oh, Peterborough first I think for me it was for me, Peterborough going back there was was going to be a, a season redemption. I, I struggled there last season, um, and I felt I kind of had a point to prove to myself more than anybody. And I felt it was exciting for me to go in there. Um, I mean, a you know, a whole new chapter in my life as well. So I felt that kind of I wanted to try and go in there with a, in a bit of a, a clearer frame of mind and a clearer vision. Yeah. I thought we had. I thought they had, and I still do think they have a fantastic team on paper. I really thought yeah. that was a team that could do some serious damage and be a genuine title contender. So obviously that's disappointing from from the Premiership point of view. Yeah. And then with Kent, um, yeah. it's usually exciting to go there because mm. for me, as anyone in Speedway knows, I've been around for a few years. <laughs> uh, so for for me to go to a track that I've never seen before. Yeah. That was something that I was really looking forward mm. to. Um, I'd met a few of the people from Kent and some of the sponsors and stuff like that, and they were people that I kind of knew from the past as well. Um, I spent a lot of time in Kent grass tracking, so I knew a few of the people around there. So for me, it was kind of going somewhere new, but I knew people there. So I was really looking forward to it. I was really looking forward to doing the best I could on the track and hopefully being dominant there as my new home track. Um but it didn't happen. So uh, hopefully hopefully things can stay in place for 2021 and I'll get the opportunity to do it then. If you guys like touch base with any of these clubs and how to, obviously, and there's not obviously anything they can do, but did you touch base with these clubs and how's that? Yeah, they're, they're still kind of loosely in contact now. I think it's a, mm. a point in the moment where I think the, the, the management are kind of seeing what's going to be in place for next year. Um, Hopefully, you know, that the, the early talks of some time ago was that teams would keep the same teams in place for next season, um, which I thought was a sensible suggestion. So if that is the case, then then I think that'd be good. And, and that, you know, I'd certainly love to be part of those teams again. So but at the moment, it's what can you talk about? You know, it's the it's, it's almost for me. I have to at the moment for me, I'm almost put speedway on the back burner, apart from obviously the Grand Prix, I have to just yeah. kind of um, focus on other things. Otherwise it just frustrates you, doesn't it? So it, it, it's what it is. Um, it's not happening. So focus on other things. Uh, what other things have you actually been doing then other than? Picking speak? my shirts, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, trying to keep busy at the workshop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got bits of work here and there um, if I can. Um, but it's tough, you know, it, mm. it's tough. Uh, it's not like I have a, a big skill set behind me. So, mm. uh, but I'm keeping busy, keeping busy, keeping busy, really. Busy, busy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, next one. I've only got cut two more for you now, Scott. Uh, next one, obviously, now we've just sort of touched on it a little bit about associating with the, the cool shirts and everything with Claudia. How did that actually originally come about to get involved with them? Because uh, obviously we've all seen them on the TV. Originally you were wearing a few loud ones, I remember. Back, <laughs> back, back, back. Exactly, back, back. You can't. Yeah, back, back, back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of how it came. It happened. It came back um, when when I was with Eurosport. Um, yeah. It was obviously I, I get kind of 
a fee to do the shows, but I don't get money for clothes or anything like that. And yeah. and I thought, man, I can't go on every week with the same shirt. Look like a right, whatever the politically correct word is for a scrum <laughs> bag. Um, yeah. So uh, I thought, I'd, okay, well if I'm going to buy a shirt, I'll kind of buy a shirt that I kind of like that I can wear more than just once in the studio. So there's a few various different ones, and then one of them I bought was um, from a shop in Ipswich, and it was a Claudio shirt, and it got kind of got a really good reception and I thought oh this is quite fun actually and I was kind of a little bit um I was only then really starting to get more active on social medias on sort of Twitter and things so um obviously Claudio Lugli it's not really an English name is it so anyway I researched them and and I thought oh they're based in London so um sort of through the agent at the time contact them just said would they be interested in supplying me with some shirts and it took a while for them to come back to me because they were really busy doing shows and et cetera, et cetera. But again, that they genuinely, they like the, the banter with the fans, you know, that mm-hmm. was what they liked. They, they, mm-hmm. they said it's kind of, it was kind of just um, organic. It wasn't something that was forced. It wasn't like a big plug. It was just a bit of banter and got people talking and they liked it. So, so it just came from there. And obviously the relationship has built and grown and, and I kind of chat to them fairly regular. And hence from there, they, they saw that, um, how well received it was within the speedo community and then i sort of spoke to him about maybe doing a few shirts tailored specifically for speedway and they were up for it and got a chat to them and managed to sort some pictures out for them and uh yeah so it's just kind of got to that level now which i think is pretty cool have they give you uh feedback on that yeah or i don't know it's early days with a speedway shirt no, they have they have they said it's been been really good you know they said the shirts were well received and They've had some some good orders come in for it, and and also the what's well, it's good as well is that they do all their shirts kind of on a limited number as well, so they don't do mass mass production. So um so they've only they or only order like a a selection in sizes, and once they're gone, they're gone. And uh, no, but they say it's been well received, and they're looking to do other bits and pieces. And they've said, oh, you know, maybe we can talk about other stuff. So um yeah, so it's it's, yeah. it's cool. It's it's fun to it's fun to just have something else to talk about and another interest and it's always good to go down to the down to their kind of warehouse studio and, and have a catch up and have a bit of fun i see all the fans talking about it on social media i won't lie i've definitely been looking looking at them all as well and so if anyone wants to check these out what do they have to do scott uh they go on to well claudio lugli is the the place where they go on to my social medias um, I've been putting a, a kind of a link out there that takes them straight to the page um, and then it takes them to the Speedway shirts and stuff. They've got a section that they've kind of dedicated more to kind of motor themes, need yeah. for speed, which, um, which is, ah, again, uh, it, I think it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, go check them out. Something even similar like what you've got on now as well as the Speedway? Yeah, so like this type of thing will be in the mm. their need for speed section, which is all kind of motor motorsport really so it's not just bikes it's cars as well so uh yeah they're they're a good good bunch of guys so go check them out yeah go and check them out people uh i have been (laughs) (laughs) i'll be wearing one soon on here won't i (laughs) they do a flamingo one i did think it was one do they so uh yeah oh that's what it is yeah yeah i do like flamingo (laughs) (laughs) yeah something different for sure um last one i got for you what uh for anyone that wants to check you out on social media what's all your social media names have you got a do you have a facebook page you've got a website as well scotty nichols yeah so uh website is uh, nicholsracing.com yeah. and uh my so both my twitter and instagram handles are the same so it's at scott nichols 78 um i will apologize in advance i do have a facebook page but i don't go on there very often so um Long story, but I apologise if people. I, I I'm really grateful that people do interact with me on there, and I feel really rude that I don't reply. So I'm sorry. I do have a look now and again. I will do a generic reply. So I must apologise for that. Like me when I was chasing you on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm terrible. I, man, I, man I, I str- I'm a man. I struggle to multitask at the best of times. Trying to do three social medias is it's hard work. Yeah. I'm not a big. I don't like sitting in front of a computer for too long anyway. Yeah. So. Um, but hey ho, so I apologise and I'll make an effort to maybe put a little something on there. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant, Scott. I really appreciate it, especially doing this part two for me after that went wrong. I really appreciate that. So yeah, really enjoyed it. No, it's a pleasure. I hope this one loads up. I don't want to yeah, yeah, I don't want to do it a third time. I'm running out of shirts. 
Well, I've got a few, Glenn. You've you got a few. You've got a few. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. You're the fit one here. You're the fit one here. <laughs> right. Thanks, Scott. Really appreciate that, mate. Thanks, mate. And I'll uh, tag you up on all the usual things when we put it up. Cool. Thanks, mate. Top man. Thanks ever so much, Scott. All right. Oh, before you go. Go on. Um, where my workshop is, the guys there know you. Sam. Do they? Vortec. Oh, yeah, because I used to obviously race Road. Mercross Cross and all that, yeah. yeah Sam bought it. Yeah. You're older than Sam? Or, cause Sam's yeah, I'm 43. I'm... Yeah, so Sam, same age as me, so I'm 42, yeah. So. Oh, so you mentioned it then, did he? Yeah, yeah, because he, he must have seen someone on Facebook. He said, oh, I saw you on Facebook. And, blah, and then he said, and I said, oh, because I didn't realise you. I know you said you'd rode Mercross, Cross, but I didn't know you'd done that much. I thought you just. Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, I remember riding with the. I, like, I, hope oh, well. to- I hope he told you how good I was. <laughs> yeah, he said he was good. <laughs> did he? Did he? Good. Fair play. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he's down there. And then so and then Jason Morris, who I go mountain biking with as well. That's So that's um, Sam's brother-in-law. So that's Jason and Amy, Sam's sister from Bortec. So. Oh, yeah, I know all the Bortec guys, yeah. And I yeah. the Bortec yams back in the 90s when we were all racing. That's it, that's it. Oh, I, yeah. that's how I knew Andy because I bought a Yamaha from him years ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, 125, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's what I raced all the time, 125s. Yeah, so my workshop, they, they, as like a sponsorship, they um let me have a section of their workshop. Oh, right, okay. So that's where I'm about. Oh, so that's where you got, because they do, uh, they do like all the gear and all that as well, don't they? No, they don't do they, they, they don't do that now. They move, so they're not at Golding Barn anymore. They're, oh, right. They're at, uh, Henfield, which is only a couple of miles up the road. There's okay. an industrial plate there, so they um they've still got they do all the motocross repairs and stuff like that. They don't really do much in the way of clothing and stuff, but then they've got the engineering bit and they've got yeah. golf buggies and yeah, so they do a fair few other other businesses there. Yeah, another top uh, British uh, schoolboy lad that I raced with is Tim Heesman. He used to be there when I uh, was racing as well in the nineties. He was at Baltic. Oh, really good rider, because right. I think he won. I won. He won the British final in '97, and I won it in '98, the year after. So. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, because Beamish is there. So Dan Beamish, his boys, yeah. Ollie and Charlie, oh. so they still ride. They're down there. So yeah, small world, isn't it? It's is a small world, mate. Yeah. So I, yeah. so I, I did. When you had my dig at me and my weight and all that, I said I was fit one day, you know. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, didn't your I just said you're. You can see you're a big lad. You're a lot bigger than me, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, six foot nine. <clears throat> no, six foot one. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, you meant big sideways, didn't you? You meant big sideways. I meant tall. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tall. Broad shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate no that, mate. Thanks for thanks for that. All Top right, man. No, pleasure. And I'll um yeah, I might see you around. Yeah, we'll keep in contact for sure. Take Thanks, care. Scott. Take it Cheers, easy, mate. mate. See ya. Thanks, Bye. mate. Bye. Bye.